Want to know how to install a tailpad on your surfboard? Here's everything you need to know. Hi guys, Chris from Stoke for Travel here, or welcome back to the channel. Now before I get started, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on any video goodness. Now today we're gonna to be talking about setting up your surfboard, or more importantly, how to install a tailpad on your surfboard. We're we'll be talking through the best tailpads to choose, how to prep your board, and of course, how to install a tailpad properly so it doesn't peel off. And right, now I'm gonna pass it over to my buddy Tom from Boards in the Bay Surf Shop in Byron Bay, Australia. He's got heaps of experience setting up boards and he's gonna guide you through everything you need to know to how to install a tailpad. Okay, so one of the things you wanna take into consideration is the shape of the tail. So if you're running a wider tail board, such as this Phoenix, you're gonna to wanna to pick yourself a wide attraction pad. That's gonna give you a lot more um, coverage over the tail. That's gonna give you more grip. And obviously, um, also it's gonna give you more padding and protection for the tail of your board. That's something that's kind of overseen um, when you're looking at tail pads. They do actually have another function as opposed to just for grip. They will actually help your board hold up better in the tail. And obviously in the front, if you do end up using a front pad. Um, there's also a couple other options. If you've got like a swallow tail, so you could get something like this for, you know, more kind of retro fish and this will fit right into the cutout. Um, and then if you've got a narrow tail, like kind of a more pin tail or round tail, um, these will work really well. Um, and that's gonna allow you to put the tail pad as far back as possible um, without having to make any adjustments like cutting off parts of the pad. So also heaps of color options available. Um, so for you know any kind of taste, um, whether it's like something camo or something with lightning bolts on it, there's a whole mix of stuff that you can get. Um, also different size arches, depending on the size of your foot. And if you've got a flat foot or an arch and also a lot of different kick designs too. Some guys and girls like a tall kick, others want something a bit more low profile, a bit less drag, but again, all kind of up to you. And um, yeah, there's plenty of great products out there that, can, that will suit whatever you need. Okay, so the first thing we need to look at when we're putting on our traction pad is you've got to make sure the board's nice and clean, free from any grime, dirt, etc. If you've got a new board, obviously it's going to come factory fresh and it's going to be in pretty good shape. However, even if it's coming straight out of the factory, I do recommend a little bit of methylated spirits. Um, this stuff evaporates by itself, so you don't really have to wait for it to dry or wipe it down with anything after um, you've used it before you put the pad on. Um, if you don't have any methylated spirits, there are a few other options. An old towel works really good to heat up and kind of lift the wax off the board if you're putting it on a used board. Um, but this is super important. If you get this part of the process kind of wrong, there's a good chance the pad's going to lift in time and might fall off and you have to replace it. Um, it can be a bit of a drama. So just, tr just uh, try and prepare as best you can. So today we're going with the Creatures of Leisure Jack Freestone Pad. This is nice and wide, so it really suits the tail shape of this board. As you can see, it is a three-piece pad, so that allows an additional adjustment. You can widen it out a little bit more if you like. Um, now, the way we generally do this um, is firstly, I um, pull the pad completely apart. You'll see it's kind of got these perforated edges to keep it all together in the packaging. Um, you just want to pop this off like so, so the pad's kind of moving. You can place it wherever you like. Um, now what I, you then want to do, bring the tail pad right to the back of the board. On a board of this length, um, you're going to want the tail pad as far back as it can go. Um, you know, the worst case scenario is if you're getting up on a wave, specifically a little bit late, and you get up with your foot behind the traction pad, it's an absolute nightmare, and you're definitely gonna get pounded. So um, as far back as possible is the go. Um, so let's kind of mount it back there. You get a bit of an eye in regards to getting the, the pad centered. Make sure you've got all the pieces nice and snug back together at this point. Okay, and now once you've eyed that up and you're kind of happy that that's all centered, I'm kind of eyeing off here and here on either side. You want to get that nice and even. Okay, once you're happy with that, pin down the middle, you want to ditch the side pieces. And you want to get out your, just your trusty HB pencil. 
don't push too hard here, but just go around the corners. This is gonna allow you to line it up super easy um, when we're peeling off and applying the traction pad. So you can get it straight in the middle first go. Okay, so after we've got our pencil marks, we can now pull back the peel ply, which is gonna reveal the adhesive. Um, just lift this about halfway up. This way, this gives us a nice freedom of movement with the front of the pad. Whilst we're sticking down the back, so we can make sure we get it bang on. Um, so just line up the front first with the pencil marks. You get that roughly in the right place. As you can see, I can freely move this around still because it's got the adhesive backing still on there. And then line up the back and just starting from the kick, you want to get that down first. And then we kind of just work up towards the front of the pad. That's going to also iron out any air bubbles or anything underneath, which is going to give us the best adhesion possible. Okay, now I'm just removing the rest of the backing, like so, lining it up with the pencil marks, and then just slide your hand, although you actually hear those air bubbles popping out, if there's any in there. And then you just wanna push it down nice and firm, just like so. And that's your centerpiece locked and loaded. Okay, so we've got our centerpiece now on, nice rock solid, that's not going anywhere. Um, now it's time to pop on our two side pieces. Um, in relation to this, what I just generally do, put them in again, all together, nice and grouped. And then you kind of want to eye up from there how far off you want to spread it. So again, this depends on the tail pad, the width of the tail of the board, tail shape, a whole other load of variables. Um, for my mate Sam, he loves to have a nice gap so he gets maximum amount of pad towards the rail of the board. Um, so we're going to stick it somewhere in this kind of vicinity like that. I reckon that's nice just there. So I'm going to leave that one there. That's how I kind of want it. And then I'm going to mirror with this side. I'm going to mirror that. So again, we just repeat the process that we did before. So once we got the pad all stuck on, I uh, just recommend that you leave it for about 24 hours before you surf the board. Otherwise you can get the traction peeling up. Just give that glue that bit of time to set. And there you have it guys, that's everything you need to know to how to install a tail pad on your surfboard. Of course, if you want to know anything more about setting up your surfboard, make sure you check out the links in the description below for all my surf guides. And of course, check out the rest of my YouTube channel as well. That's it for this week guys, make sure you like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you next week.